Hello everyone, Tony here, and in this video I will be showing you how you can control and program WS2812 BLEDs from an Arduino Uno. Let's get started. So this is a note from uh, future me. This video ended up getting a bit too long, it's over an hour if I release it in its entirety. So instead I'm going to be splitting this video into two parts. This first part is going to be um, getting started with these WS2812 BLEDs. I'll talk about how the LED strips work, uh, what these are, how addressable RGB works, as well as how you can actually wire to the Arduino, um, how this daisy chaining mechanism works. And I'll run through some of the demo code so we'll get the fast LED library installed and up and running. So in the continuation of this video, we're going to talk about how you can write your own programs to interact with these LEDs. So again, this first part's a bit more of the demo stuff, and then next episode we'll talk about how you can write your own Arduino code that can manually set the RGB values or create your own patterns. That'll all be in the second uh, continuation of this video. Some background. Why might you want to use WS2812B LEDs? Well, WS2812B LED strips are one of the many different LED strips that supports control addressing each LED pixel individually. In fact, they're usually not even an LED strip form, except the convenient part is that these can be daisy chain and you can address each of the LEDs in this in the sequence one by one and give it an RGB color. So as opposed to traditional RGB LED strips where you would need to provide a common anode or cathode and then an R, G, and B uh, to the whole strip, these LEDs only have three pins, five volts, ground, data in, well and I guess data out because you can daisy chain them. Um, but you, you only need to connect three pins to, off the first LED to your Arduino and then there's only three wires going wrong, you just daisy chain them. Now, unlike a regular RGB LED strip as well, where if I gave, just turn on the red channel on, all of the LEDs will turn red, the fact that each LED can take in data means that we can send a different color value uh, through daisy chaining. So as you can see, the color is uh, different and we, can, and we can control the color and brightness of each LED here individually. Now, there are many different types of these LEDs. Uh, the ones I'm showing here are based on the WS2812B uh, chip, but there's also WS2812, WS2811, and while well, there are a bunch of varieties, um, a lot of them come down to one of two main types. Uh, the first just require five volts ground and a data pin, so it's a one wire interface, that's what you're seeing here. You only need one data pin connected to the Arduino to run these. The second most common type um, need both data and a clock. So for those, you will hook up two pins on your Arduino, and then that can take in a clock signal, uh, where it tells it, okay, shift the data along, and then a data signal, which is what, what, what the data that you're sending to the LEDs themselves. Um, these just use the data pin for the clock uh, as well. Um, now, there are a couple differences. The latest 2812B LEDs are 3.3 to 5 volts. Um, so you can power these from 3.3, or you can just plug them into the 5 volt pin on your Arduino, and it will work just fine as opposed to regular 2812s. Um, so all the, and the data pin also is an eve to between 3.3 and 5 volts. Now, different LEDs work with different voltages. There are some that work off only 3.3 volts. There are some that are 12 volts. There are some LED strips where the chip is on the strip itself and not the LED, so you can only control them in uh, three LED increments. So it'll depend a lot on the exact specifics of what you're using. Either way, uh, for the purpose of this video, we'll be using the Fast LED Driver, and Fast LED Driver supports a very wide range of these different LED strips. For this video, I'm going to be using the Fast LED Library on the Arduino to control the LEDs. Fast LED supports a wide range of the different LED formats that I've talked about. There's a link a full list in the description, and I'll put a link to their GitHub repo as well. Um, essentially, Fast LED abstracts a lot of the individual timings that you need to get these to work, and you can just send, you can just create an array of the RGB values that you wish to send, and it'll take care of how to format them for your specific LEDs, uh, brightness, all of that stuff. So it's very convenient to use, and it's very easy to work with as well. Um, I'll go over how you can first up wire these. It's very simple and straightforward. Um, and I'll also go through a couple of the demo scripts. And finally, I'll show you how you can write your own program to take advantage of these LEDs. And as I mentioned, it's pretty easy to program. So you can do everything from control them over serial to whatever you want. Um, for example, a not very straightforward use I've done with these is you can also attach an ESP8266, send an API call, and based on the result of the API call, you can uh, individually light up the LEDs in the order that you want or to represent a specific color or pattern. There are so many applications, there's everything from fancy light shows to having a cool background behind your desk, all the way to some borderline questionable stuff. Uh, for example, have you wanted your daily temperature expressed 
uh, through LEDs in the morning? Well, you can't do that. The thing with the Arduino is that there are so many different libraries available that you, you're not just stuck with just running these LEDs. You can run them in response to a wide array of things. So everything from starting with buttons to connecting on different sensors, uh, talking over serial to a computer, talking over Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, so on and so forth. And then you can start to group these together and end up with a much more complicated project. Now, there are a few limitations. Most Arduinos only having a kilobyte of RAM mean that you can only address about 300 LEDs with their RGB values. Uh, Arduinos are too far kilobytes. I mean, again, if you're going kilobytes of RAM, yeah, you can only store so much information, right? And each LED needs at least a couple of bytes to store the, uh, the color and the brightness component, so on and so forth. Um, if you want to run a crazier amount of LEDs, you can always go to something like an STM32. Uh, the Facility Library has been ported for the STM32 boards, and those generally are a lot more powerful. Um, the other limitation is, for example, one of my friends was building a POV display out of these. Uh, 2812B LEDs can only be updated at a rate of around 400 hertz. Um, generally, you won't even go that high. You'll probably stick to like around 100. But that means that if you want something to be updating crazy fast, you won't be able to achieve them with this. And the more related to the daisy chain, the slower your response time will get. Because for a signal to propagate all the way to this LED, it's first got to pass through all of the other ones with the clock signal. And that's not instantaneous. Um, so about 400 hertz will be your limit. Probably less. Um, I'd recommend stick to about 100, 120. Now, this is opposed to if you are just driving the RGB LEDs one by one off the Arduino, you could use, instead of using the regular PWM, you could use the internal timers. Um, I believe the Arduino has two 8-bit and a 16-bit timer. Um, you'd probably be able to use a 16-bit timer to achieve a couple thousand hertz in terms of your uh, response rate. Um, as I said, not happening with these. But, again, these have the convenience aspect. With that, you would need to connect each LED one by one, and if you're multiplexing, you're never going to be able to get the LED solid on. Whereas with this, you just give it the RGB value and it takes care of everything. It's pretty, a lot of the program is abstracted. Now, for the demo that I did in the int introduction of the video, I was th this is just a one meter LED strip with 30 LEDs. I'll go into more about the hardware I'm using. Um, and this is perfectly fine being powered right off the Arduino. Um, each LED can pull a couple of like 10 milliamps. So uh, we're absolutely fine. This is 30 LEDs. Now, I also have a bigger roll that, I will, uh, that I'll show in a minute and that is uh, 300 LEDs on a 5 meter roll. Uh, and for that, you absolutely cannot power them off an Arduino. Um, you can if you're gonna only going to be loading up red or something, but the moment you go to the higher power colors, like blue or white, you'll see a taper off. If you turn all, try to turn all the LEDs onto white, it'll by the end of your strip, you'll only be at yellow, because there's not enough voltage to run the blue LED. Um, the solution for that is uh, pretty simple. What you can do is uh, you use a separate power supply, and as I said, I'll show this, and you can just br uh, run the five, you can run the power to the LEDs off the power supply, bridge the ground with the Arduino, and just provide the signal from the Arduino. And uh, that way you won't have the limitation of uh, the maximum current you can draw. That's also the reason why I'm using a 30 LED meter roll for these demos uh, and programming, instead of the 144, just for convenience, because I absolutely know that we can power uh, 30 LEDs off of an Arduino's 5 volt pin. The more LEDs you add, the higher the power range is going to be. And in fact, if you're going to be using a separate power supply, uh, adding power at just one end of the strip isn't enough. Um, you will see that the voltage will taper off towards the end due to the resistance of the copper used in the uh, wiring here. Um, so what you'll probably have to do is every couple, 50, every 100 LEDs or so, you'll probably have to solder on extra power leads to make sure that the power is evenly distributed. Now, if this wouldn't be very important, Except if your voltage gets below a certain rating, then your data pin starts to have issues as well. So there's some things to keep in mind. The other thing is, if you're just running a couple like 30 LEDs, wiring is pretty easy. You can just connect it directly. The more LEDs you have, the more I have to recommend a resistor near the data pin, because the data pin usually on these is um, there. Reverse voltage can kill them. They don't always have reverse polarity protection. Uh, they don't have over voltage protection on the data pins either. So you might end up frying your LEDs. Um, so a resistor near the uh, data pin, uh, also to create a high impedance input. Um, and I would also recommend a smoothing capacitor near the voltage just to make sure that you, you, you don't end up with uh, weird spikes. With that said, let's take a look at the hardware we're using, then let's take a look at the software. Alright, so let's briefly talk about the hardware that you're going to need for this project. First and foremost, you're going to need some LEDs. So for this project, I'll be using these, uh, this is a one meter roll of WS2812B LEDs, as you can see, um, so, and this just has 30 LEDs per meter. 
Um, these are widely available in one meter, two, three, five meter uh, rolls. Um, obviously, your power requirements will change depending on what you're using. There's also a, diff a wide array of different uh, chipsets. So, as I said, these have uh, the 2812 LEDs. Um, you can also get ones with the 2012, uh, these are 2012Bs, you can get 2012s, you can get 2011s, and there's a whole list, I'll put a link in the description, where you can see which ones are supported. Um, and you can just go for one that suits you. Now, you don't always have to get these in little rolls, I also have a much bigger roll here. This is a 5 meter roll with uh, 300 LEDs of the same WS2812B LED. Um, and just as with that one, these ones also have the same three pins, voltage, ground, and data. Now, the thing with these is because we have 300 of them, they can draw a lot more power. So whereas with the little strip, you can get away with running them off an Arduino, for something bigger like this, you're going to end up needing a power supply. So this is just a uh, Chinese uh, 120 or 220 volt uh, switch mode power supply that can produce 5 volts at I believe 30 amps. Obviously you don't need 30 amps, it's just when the price for a 30 amp is the same as the price for a 20 amp, which is essentially the price of shipping, you may as well end up with a 30 amp power supply. Now a, a couple things to note, looking at these LEDs we can see that each LED on uh, this particular strip has a capacitor uh, in line with the LED and the LEDs themselves have uh, four wires, data in, data out, power and ground. Uh, but what I want to bring your attention to is how all of the data pins have a little uh, little triangle arrow. Well, this is because these are directional. Since this whole thing is daisy chained, you need the data out from this LED to go into the data in on the next LED. So starting at the, the beginning of the strip, you, you need to follow data in, data out from this, data in, data in from out. So I bring this up because when we're wiring it, you will need to connect the data in portion. All right, the next thing you're going to need is an Arduino. Uh, for this video right here, I am using an Arduino Uno. These are widely available. I have a cheap Chinese clone here. Um, you can use Uno, you can use Pro Micros, you can use Arduino Nanos. Um, for 2012, it's actually very convenient to run uh, Arduino Pro Micros, which are pretty tiny, um, especially if you don't need the big board of this because it makes it very easy to just like, if you're going to be using it as like lighting behind your desk or for like some ambient lighting, um, you can just like wrap it around um, and just include it with the LEDs themselves. And you don't need to uh, deal with the bigger board size of the Unos. Now, the reason I say you don't need a big Arduino is because we only need one pin. We just use the one pin for data. Uh, you also need a clock pin if you're using any, uh, if you're using LED strips that need both data and clock. We're not going to be touching any of the other pins. We don't need pulse with modulation. We don't need any of the more advanced features, SPI, I switch, or anything that the Uno provides us. Um, so you can go for a much smaller size. In fact, I very successfully run these LEDs even off AT Tinies. Um, Pro Micros happen to be easier to program than AT Tinies. You can just use FTDI breakout boards. Um, AT Tinies are a little bit trickier. You need to run, pass them through usually another Arduino. Um, but whatever board you want to use, you can uh, you can generally get away with. We don't need the most advanced boards for this project. Anything, pretty much any Arduino board that can run the fast LED library will do. In fact, you can even use STM32 boards if you don't want, if you don't have Arduinos around. All right, in terms of other components, we're also just going to need a couple jumper wires. In this case, I just have three uh, for voltage, ground, and data. And you need some way of programming the Arduino. I'll be using a USB A to B cable for that. If you're going to be running a longer LED strip, like the strip of 300 LEDs that I showed, I would also highly recommend adding a 220, 330, or like 470 ohm resistor in series with the data as close to the LEDs as possible. And if you're, and I would also recommend a uh, capacitor to help filter the power. For our use with just 30 LEDs, these don't really matter. And for simplicity, we can connect them directly to the Arduino. I would say that the resistor on the data pin might be more important just to create a high impedance input. Otherwise, your floating uh, input uh, since there's not going to be any current flow on it, can cause walkiness. So, if you plug in your LEDs and you l and looks like you're getting random garbage noise on them, try adding a small uh, resistor in series with the data input of the LEDs. Generally, that fixes the problem with these. So, if you look at the two ends of the LED strip, uh, on both ends we have two connectors. We have this three-wire connector that has a red, green, and a white wire on it and then a separate uh, two individual red and white wires. On the other end, we also have the same thing. We also have a red, green, and white, and we have a red, white. So, which way is which? Well, you'll notice that on one end, these are female connectors, and on the other end, these are uh, male pins. 
Now, the way these LEDs work is they are directional. You need to go in, uh, data in to data out. You want to connect the side with the headers um, to the Arduino. And how can you know this? Well, if you look closely at the LED strip, so we see each LED with their four pins, power, ground, data, and data. And in between the LEDs where we can cut the strip apart, we see that it is labeled 5 volts, D in, D out, and ground. D O is data out, D in is data in. So we need these daisy chains so that the data out from this LED goes to the data in of the next. Then the data out from that LED goes to the data in of the next one. Data out from that LED to the data in of the next one. So on and so forth. Now if you take a look then, that means that the first error of the first LED data in comes from these wires right here. And the last LED's data out goes to the pins on, uh, on the other end of the strip. So how does this work? Well, Red is going to be 5 volts, while well, for WS2812Bs, they, are, they can work with anywhere from 3.3 volts to 5 volts, so whichever voltage you happen to have on hand with the microcontroller of your choice. For these, I'm going to be running them with 5 volts because that's the most convenient when you're using an Arduino. So then we see that we have two wires. We have the red and we have the white, um, and we have the green on this connector. Well, the, the, both the reds and the whites are actually wired in parallel. Reds are always 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and whites are ground in this case. Um, I don't know why they chose to make them white instead of black or something, but just keep it in mind, the whites will be connected to ground. Um, the green, then, is the data pin. So on this end, the green is your data input, and on the end, other end that has the pins instead of the sockets, it is the data output. This is done so that these are easy to daisy chain. So if I grab the input, and I can say this is the output of my last LED, I can easily plug these into each other. So you can very easily daisy chain uh, multiple of these LED strips. Next, I want to touch upon then why the two power connectors. Do you plug in power to the red and white here, or do you plug in power to the red and white here? Well, you can do either. Generally, these connectors were meant so that you can easily daisy chain these or connect them to uh, um, integrated circuits that have uh, pins for them. But, and the extra red and white here are so that you can wire extra power if you need to. As I said, they're wired in parallel. Now, why might you need this? Well, in our case, we only have 30 LEDs. So for us, it really doesn't matter. For example, though, if we were using um, 144 LEDs a meter or we had a 5 meter strip, then we would not be able to get enough power from the 5 volt pin of the Arduino to run them. So we would need to wire power separately. Generally, if you're going to be wiring power separately, you would use the extra white and red connector. Um, so this can be with a giant 5 volt power supply like I showed a minute ago, or you can attach these X to, more other, to another USB header, so on and so forth. It's just important that if you are going to be powering these from somewhere other than the Arduino, um, you make sure that you connect the grounds of the circuit together and you make sure that your Arduino is properly tolerant. So if I connect the red here to 5 volts and then I plug this into the Arduino, you want to make sure that um, your Arduino is then not plugged into the computer because then you will have two 5 volts from power supply and from your computer at the same time and that can interfere with each other. So generally only have one source of 5 volts. You can power the Arduino separately from the LEDs. The only thing you have to do then is make sure that you connect the ground of the Arduino to the ground of the LED strip. Alright, so let's go ahead and plug this into the Arduino. As I said, you're going to be using the side with the three holes and not the three pins. That is your input, so we're going to use the we're going to use the input of the LED strips. To this, you're just going to need a couple jumper wires. I just have these uh, three red wires I cut. Normally, I would hate using the same color wire, but this is pretty simple to do. We're just going to plug one end into the pin here for all of these. All right, then on the other end, the red the pin going to the red wire is going to go to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino. The pin going to the white wire here, as you can see, um, let me not cover that, is going to go to the ground pin on the Arduino. And the wire going to the green is where you get to pick. Usually people tend to use pin 3 or pin 5 for data. So let's plug it into pin 5. Alright, so your LEDs are all powered and have data now. So, uh, next up, you can just plug it into your computer. I'm going to be using this USB A to B wire. And since I already have a program, you can immediately see the program starts to run. This was just the, uh, uh, the chaser example that I had in my intro. Um, um, so now that everything's wired, we can actually start to program it. I have a program upload on this, but I'll, I'll, I'll recreate the steps for you guys. 
All right, so we can move on to the software side now. Um, I won't be going over how you can install the Arduino IDE. It should be st pretty straightforward. I'm recording this on a computer running Fedora 32. Um, just follow the installation instructions for your uh, distribution or operating system of choice. Now, to actually get programming with these WS2812 B LEDs, we're going to first need to get the driver or the library. Um, so for that, we're going we want to head on over to Tools and click on Manage Libraries. Wait for that to open. Now, general, the most popular library to use for pixel-based LED strips is the Fast LED library. So if we go here, uh, we can see it's the Fast LED by Daniel Garcia. You can uh, their more info link will take you to their code repo. So if we were going to choose the latest version, which in this case is 3.3.2 as of the time of recording this video, and we can hit install. So now we have the Fast LED library installed, and we can use it in our projects. So first, I guess, let's go ahead and check to make sure that we have our wiring done correctly and that our LED strip works. So you're going to want to go over to Tools, select the board you're using. In my case, I'm using an Arduino Uno. If you're using a Nano or Mega, just select it from the list and select the USB port. For me, I'm using the USB TTY USB 0 uh, serial input. If you are on a Linux computer, make sure you have access to make sure you have access to the serial ports on the computer. Um, generally, you will either have to create UDEV rules or you will have to add yourself to a group that has access to those ports. Alternatively, you can always use the Arduino IDE as super user or launch it with sudo, although this is not recommended. All right, so we're going to pick uh, the TTY and then we can go over to files and let's just throw up an example for now. So we, let's go under examples, fast LED, and let's pick the demo reel 100 file. This is famous because this is the very quick, essentially 100 line program that goes over a bunch of convenient uh, and simple uh, LEDs. Another one you might want to keep an eye out on for is, is first light. This will just essentially move a white dot along the LEDs. It's useful um, because it shows how to configure the LEDs. And for example, it also includes essentially every LED type that is supported by the Fastly library. Um, so everything from the TM, WS, NeoPixels, uh, so these are all the ones that only need um, data pin. These ones need the data pins. The ones on the bottom, oops, also require a clock pin. Let's go over to demo reel 100 first. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the data pin to the data pin we're using. In our case, we are using pin number five. Um, we are also going to change the LED type to WS2812B. Um, as long as it's one of the ones supported, you will be good. Uh, we can next define the brightness of the LED strip. Uh, it goes on a value from 0 to 255. Since this is on video and I want the camera to pick it up, I'm going to set this to 255. Obviously, you can pick what you want for your use. And we also have frames per second. So this is the refresh rate of your LEDs. Um, you can go with 120. It's a pretty sane default. Uh, as I said, I believe WS2812B LEDs particularly cap out at around 400 hertz. Um, obviously, I'll a lot of people aren't actually using 2812s. They're using Chinese WS2812B knockoffs, um, and no one knows how high those will go. Uh, we're also going to change the uh, number of LEDs to 30. Uh, this is used because essentially we're going to make an array of CRGB values for each of the LEDs. Um, and uh, here we go. So this is what I mean. The library is very simple to use. All you need to do at first is just do add LEDs. Uh, you can also add an RGB color correction if you wanted to have some sense of uh, color correctness on your LED setup. Uh, set the master brightness, and then the rest is just fastled.show, and you just fill in the fill in the array, send the array off, uh, and then it'll and then it will take care of the rest. Um, let's upload this to our Arduino and take a look. All right, let's hit upload. All right, so we can see it's going through the pattern. So it's doing an RGB scroll now, then it's going to do an RGB scroll with some random noise added. So first we get the uh, RGB. Then we have RGB with the uh, added noise, the sparkles. Then we have more of the sparkles. And now we have just a color changing wave like what I had in the intro. And 
and we have now multiple clippers going across. Anyway, the reason this demo reel exists is because it shows how easy it is to get started with the library. This whole file is only a couple hundred lines, yet it shows exactly um, how many different patterns and animations you can do just given a couple lines of programming. Um, for the sake of this video, I might as well show a couple more of the examples. All right, so you can always access the other examples by going to examples, facility. Uh, I can also show you guys, for example, for example, here's the first light file I was referring to. So for this one, we just uh, uncomment our particular lady strip and set the data pin to five and 30 LEDs. And we can hit upload. And this will just do a single white dot moving back and forth. And we can see that obviously that, that works. Just a light going from the start to the end of the LEDs. It makes it easy to show. Um, it makes it easy for us to see uh, exactly what's happening. All right. So uh, we can also go over another demo. One more would be, for example, the color palette. This one shows the different uh, waves and transitions that we can do. So I'll make this uh, program a decent size. Once again, let's set our brightness to max, set our LEDs to 2812B. Uh, these LEDs are in the GRB order. Um, some others may differ from that. Obviously, if you see that the colors are going off wrong, uh, that's something that you can always fix. And our LED pin is five, and I will set our number of LEDs to 30. And we can upload. And you can see a couple of these demos. There are a couple other ones, as I said. For example, the color temperature will let you have color temperature corrections. Um, for example, if you're in 3000 Kelvin room lighting, uh, having these be white will look a lot bluer than they would otherwise. So here we go. Uh, this one just does, this is a pure RGB. Just, it's just doing a smooth fade across all the LEDs. Uh, now it's doing individual color segment chunks. Same with the chunks, but with a fade in, fade out. like my camera has died. You can use the color palettes in, in, in your file. Um, so these are compact palettes. Uh, you can just use them. They're, my, uh, they're pretty simple to use. Um, they essentially have the modes for whether you want linear blending or whether you want it to be cut off. Um, and it's because essentially the library lets you just create CRGB palettes as an entire thing. So of however many LEDs you want. And then you can just shift them along, send them down the LEDs. Uh, and so here we have white feeding in. This is going between blue and white. And this is like a red to green, back to red, so on and so forth. Now we get the uh, French flag. Same thing except with linear blending. So on and so forth. So it's pretty easy to get started and uh, up and running with the uh, with the library. And there are a wide number of examples to help you out as well. And of course, you can look at these demos and uh, help use them for in, in your programs as well. So this was the file I was just showing. And essentially, you can just create the color palettes if you want it, uh, however you want them, and send them down. Now, let's, I guess, just do an example from scratch and let's take a look at how you would actually uh, create one of these. Thank you all so much for watching this video on how to get started with WS 2812B LED strips and other pixel based LEDs using the Arduino. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something that will help you throughout your projects as well. If you enjoyed this video, please consider commenting down below or subscribing to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Um, if you had any questions uh, or any issues getting this set up, you're more than welcome to leave a comment. I am also a student so I don't always have the fastest reply time, but I'll try to get back to you. If you have any friends that are interested in weird LED project ideas like this, feel free to forward this over to them. If you want to see future videos like this, stay tuned for part two. Part two is going to be on how we can write our own programs to interact with these LED strips, how we can define our own patterns, how we can set all the pixels on the LEDs ourselves. Subscribe so you don't miss that. It's coming out very shortly. And once again, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day.